Hey, welcome back everyone. So we're going to continue our exploration of SQL. And up until now, we've been talking about if I have an existing table or a couple of existing tables, how do I extract data from those tables? So how to select data where a certain condition is true. We looked at more complicated things like grouping, uh, doing the having clause, even doing joins on two tables to see how they interact with each other. But something we haven't ever done yet is changing the elements of a table. So adding new rows to a table, or updating existing rows of a table, or getting rid of rows in the table we no longer want. So that's what these next couple videos will be about, about how do you modify existing data. So it turns out the library I was using, the Panda SQL, it was really good for the first kind of operations where you're doing operations on existing data, but it didn't really have any support for modifying the table. So I had to switch libraries to actually a library that's probably more commonly used, so it's good news. It's the SQLite 3 library in Python. So this is gonna allow us to uh, have a local file in our directory. In this case, it's gonna be called students.db, which behaves like a database. So it's a file, but it behaves just like a database where you can uh, execute queries against it and it can store multiple tables. So for all intents and purposes, nothing's really changing. It's just a little bit of new syntax in Python. I will also uh, include a link to the documentation for SQLite 3 so you can read about it if there's any confusion. So that's what I did. And the only two statements you need are you create a connection, con equals SQLite 3, which is the name of the library, dot connect, and you connect to that file, which is acting as your database. Then you create something called a cursor, which is going to allow us to execute statements against that database file. So we do cur equals con.cursor, and that's all the setup you have to do. Now you're ready to execute statements. So I'm gonna show you how to create the table in a separate video. For now, assume the table is just created. Here's how you would select all the elements from this table. So I just do a simple uh, SQL query, select everything from my students table, and then that will, uh, you do cur.execute the statement. So that executes the statement, and you're asking how do I get the results from that statement? Well, you do cur.fetch all. So that's going to give you all of the results that were returned by that statement. I just wrote a wrapper function called display as table so that the results will be nicely displayed in a pandas data frame. This is that display as table, but you don't need to worry too much about that. The main focus of this video is on the statements themselves. So if I go ahead and execute the select everything, we see that it's empty for right now. So it has a name, GPA, major, and year, just as the table we've been looking at in all the previous videos. But this time I've initialized it as having nothing in there. So we're going to have to fill it up. So starting simple, how do I insert a single record into the table? So I want to insert a student named Yoda, who has a 3.8 GPA, who's a math major, and who is a third year. Now, first thing to note is that some of my variables are in strings, and some are just by themselves. They're in strings if they're text variables, and they're just by themselves if they're numeric, like integers or floats. So the syntax is using this insert into keyword in SQL. So we're saying insert into my students table, the following values. And in this case, the values are grouped in these parentheses and we put all four of the values we would want. So we execute that statement and then we execute the select everything from students. So now we would expect there to be one thing in the students table, right? So let's see if that's true. Indeed, it's true. We have one single student here with all the information we had provided. Now, the um, one other thing about the SQLite 3 library that's good to know is that you want to do this commit, con.commit. That basically locks in the operation you just did or all the operations you just did into the database, and now they can't be reverted. Um, so you want to do this periodically so that you're not losing information. When you do that commit, it basically just saves all your changes to this students.db file, so they're persistent. So that even if you like leave Jupyter Notebook and then you come back, and then you read back in the students.db file, all your changes are still there, like a real database. So we do that commit, and now it's committed to the database. Now, uh, usually we don't wanna insert just one record, we wanna insert several records. So here's how you insert multiple values. It's really the same syntax, it's just we put a bunch of these students separated by commas. So we're doing cur.execute. This is a cool thing I learned. If you put these three ticks instead of double quotes, you can just put multiple lines of text without having to do that um, slash thing to separate lines. So that's a cool thing. We're gonna insert into students all this, uh, all these values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven students with various GPAs, majors, and years. So we do that. 
we uh, do another select everything from students and we get something that starts looking more like a table from uh, our previous videos. We have a bunch of names, GPAs, majors, and years. I'll do a commit again. And now we can just do whatever queries we want on this table now that there's a bunch of students in there. In this case, we're just doing get me just the name of the student and major of the student where GPA is above 3.2. And I get just the name and major of students where the GPA is above 3.2. So that's great. That is how you um, insert multiple records into a table. Now, um, just for a couple extra examples to really get the hang of the insert into statement. Um, notice here I didn't have to specify which columns I'm inserting because when you... Um, put these uh, data where there's every single column is accounted for. So name, GPA, major, and year. You don't have to specify which columns you would like to insert into. But there's also cases where you don't want to populate certain columns. Like what if you're inserting a very new student who doesn't have a GPA yet? So it doesn't really make sense for you to insert anything for their GPA. So down here, that's what we'll do. We're just going to insert into students and only caring about these three columns, name, major, and year. And the values will be Small, the major is math, and the year is one. Notice we don't put GPA here, and that's okay, since we also uh, specifically said that we're not going to be putting GPA in. Now, one question is, when we do that, what does it look like? So we see that we have student mall, math major, year one. Since we didn't specify GPA, it just fills in some null, nan, or none value, basically saying I don't have a value for that right now. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And then you can do another statement just for practice. Select name of the student from students where GPA is null. So we're only going to get that mall student back. Because if we look at this data, there's only one student whose GPA is unknown. So we get the name of that one student. Now the last thing we want to do is probably the most useful operation in a real world setting, like at your job or in your research, academia, whatever. Usually you have um, multiple tables. And you want to select records from one table and insert them into a different table. That's usually how you're going to be using this insert into, rather than doing this explicit writing out of entries. So I do have a second table set up, and it's called New Students. Let's take a look at what it looks like. New Students just has three students who are first years and who don't have a GPA yet. My goal is to take these three students and put them into my main students data. How am I going to do that? Turns out just a little bit of a change in syntax. We're going to keep the insert into students. So this is saying I'm going to insert the following thing into my students table. And then you do a select statement. So I'm going to select everything from new students. So that's just saying take the entirety of my new students data and insert that into my students data. If I do that, then I commit it. And then I look at what does my students data look like. We see it got a little bit bigger. I get my three new students at the end. They are, have unknown GPAs because they're new students. Okay, and that's really it. There's variations you can do, of course, but that is uh, a lot of the main use cases of the insert into statement in SQL. Next, we'll be looking at how do you update existing table entries. All right, so until next time.